Hello everyone, my name is Whitney Lucas. Welcome back to my craft room. I'm with Crafty Thoughts and Whatnots, and today we're going to make some Christmas tree decorations. Um, actual items in the shape of a Christmas tree decoration, not actual like ornaments for a tree. Anyways, that, that, whole, that whole opening right there was just confusing. Let's keep it. Anyways, so what we're going to do is we're going to take some styrofoam cones and we're going to wrap them in some good stuff and then we're going to put some good stuff on top of that and then some good stuff underneath it and then good stuff on it and it's going to look really good. I'm doing a great job at words putting into sentence making. Anyways, uh, I did two small ones and I'm going to make identical ones, just bigger sisters of those. So here's the first one. You ready for this? Guess what it's got? <gasps> you see it? Buffalo check. Shocker. I know. So this is a, I got this in a two pack at Hobby Lobby, these, these phones, these little styrofoam cones. This is the two pack, this $4.47 at Hobby Lobby um, for a two pack of two by eight inch by 5.8 inch. This is the, the label right there. So you get two of these at Hobby Lobby like that. Uh, and I had this in my stash. If you have been with me for a while, you remember that I made some carrots. Back in the day, I made some uh, some yarn-wrapped carrots that got real popular. Lots of people ran with that. And uh, I had a lot of uh, styrofoam cones left over. So this came in a two-pack. And here's the other one. Look how cute it is. She's so cute. And this right here, guys, this is one of the... My other little happy gift from um, burlapfabric.com. These are burlap roses, the lace and burlap roses that I absolutely love from their website. You get a dozen of them for a very delicious price. I will have to look that up and put that right here on the bottom of the screen because once again, I did not look it up before I hit record. Isn't that great, Whitney? Wonderful job. Anyways, you can get these off their website. I will put a link directly to these roses in the description below uh, because burlapfabric.com was gracious enough to supply these roses to me to use in my project today. So, I have uh, more and when I make the big sister to the little sisters here, um, we're going to use more of them and you'll see exactly, you know, their construction. They're really, they're just gorgeous. They're absolutely gorgeous. So, um, there's the two little sisters and we're going to make big sisters out of these girls here. So, little girls, and then they're going to have like a matching uh, larger one for each one. Now, these cones here I got at Michael's uh, literally last night because I didn't have larger cones, which I thought I did. So, couldn't tell you how much I paid for it, but right now Michael's was doing a 20% off all regular price items. So, whatever this was, it was 20%. And I want to say it's like two ninety nine or three ninety nine, which is not exactly a good buy, but I had to have them, so I bought them. It is what it is. So at any event, we got two of the larger cones, and these are 3.7 inch by 8.9 inch. If you see right down here at the bottom. They have all kinds of different size cones. I prefer buying the green ones, but I know there's, there's white styrofoam ones, and they get way bigger and way longer. Um, and then there's green ones. I, um, this wasn't the biggest one here. I just wanted to have one size up that was complementary to the small ones that I already had because I just wanted to make a pair of each. That's all I wanted to do. So we got two of those. Um, we got a roll of jute. This was from Walmart, I believe. Jute cord. Uh, yeah, jute cord. 100% natural. One pound. Uh, $2.97, that's definitely a Walmart price, anything with $2.97 on it, yeah. This is a Walmart thing of, uh, of jute cord. Now, I get jute cord everywhere. I must have just decided to buy this because, I, let me tell you, I am not in need of jute cord, but for some reason, I tend to purchase it. I've got two of these things. So anyways, um, this right here we're going to use to wrap one of them. And again, you can get jute cord anywhere. You can get jute cord online on Amazon, which I have an Amazon shop below if you guys want to click on that. helps me out. But you can also go to any hardware store. You can probably get it pretty cheap there in larger rolls or smaller rolls. I'm not sure, but I've gotten sisal roping, all kinds of stuff at Lowe's or Home Depot. Those places are great. Um, and then the other one is wrapped in some yarn. Now, this was yarn that I bought for a different project, but... You guys know how those projects don't kind of happen. But, I mean, this one probably will happen, and I don't need a whole skein of yarn for it. Um, so, I still will have a lot left. But, anyways, uh, this is a Lion Brand Homespun. 
I bought it because I like how it's like wavy. I like the way it looks. And that's what happened here when we wrapped her. I went up and I started wrapping more because there was a little seafood, but I like the texture that it gave it. So in any event, one is a lumpy yarn, one is a jute cord, and then we got just um, cute little things here. Of course, you know, you guys know I got that buffalo check fever. Uh, so this buffalo chick ribbon, all this ribbon is from Michael's. Which all their Christmas ribbon now, I think I, when I was there last night, was 40% off. So if you jump in now before, of course, it all sells out before Thanksgiving. We'll see how it goes. But um, the second one does not have any ribbon on it. It's just some extra little goodies. And this is all uh, stuff I've had in my stash. This is leftover lamb's ear from Hobby Lobby. And this is a little uh, bush off of a bush from Michael's. So here's the, what's left of that Michael's bush. And here's what's left of that Hobby Lobby bush. So you don't need that much, but again, these are just extra items I had leftovers in my stash. Uh, now, the fun part, not fun part, because it's all fun. Uh, I also took in, now this is optional, you don't have to do it, but I like a finished look. I put a little circle on the end of each of them, and look how pretty and beautifully straight cut that is. It's beautiful, isn't it? It's gorgeous. You can tell that I did not cut that by hand. Isn't that nice? So what is... Um, Here's a little test one. I have a sheet of felt. You can get these anywhere, Walmart, all the hobby stores, uh, all the craft stores. Um, probably paid 25 cents for it. I don't know. This is a 9 by 12 sheet. I wanted black because this had black in it, but I didn't have any. So I went with what was next best. I had charcoal, so I picked charcoal. Now what I did is I bought this little tool a while ago because I was going to make some felt flowers, which I still will do because we all know how things slow down after the holidays. And I'm going to need to make some felt flowers, possibly maybe a Valentine's thing or a Mother's Day or a spring thing. Who knows? So I want to make some felt flowers, and I need to cut a lot of circles, and I need to make them look good, not by hand. So um, I got this little tool here, and this is a circle rotary cutter. This thing is amazing and very super easy to use, and it will be also in my Amazon shop because that's where I got it. So uh, if you check uh, the, in the description below as well as in the first pinned comment, you will find a link to my Amazon store and then you will see this under your tools section in my Amazon shop. This little buddy is amazing. And I literally, the first time I used it was today to cut the circles for the bottoms of these. So you guys will see me use it again. It made the, cutting those out beautifully. It was a breeze. It was like butter. It was like butter. Anyways, so it is, uh, the brand is Olfa, you can see that. This is the packaging right here, Olfa. Of course, when you rip it open, you rip open the thing. Best made tools in the world, Olfa. O-L-F-A. Anyways, it's in my Amazon store, guys. It's worth every penny. I do not believe it was that expensive. Again, I can check on it. You see that right here. Um... <laughs> I don't really tend to buy stuff that's crazy expensive, and if I do, I make sure I tell you, kind of like the pick machine. That's about, you know, a little bit, you know, budget planning, if you could say so. But in any event, I'm going to get this stuff collected together, get some stuff cleared off, and then we'll get down to the craft table and we'll start getting these girls made. We'll see how it goes. Just one second, guys. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is we'll just get to wrapping since that's probably going to be the most time-consuming thing here. And even then, that's not really all that big of a deal. So unwrap your pretty little cone. I'm going to do the jute one first because that one goes the quickest. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start... I'm just going to start with rolling this in like a little curly Q like thing here. And I'm going to roll it on itself. Okay, so I'm going to start literally twir twirling it in my hands here if you can see I'm making like a little just a little circle almost like a little snail but not like a real slimy one because that's disgusting but like you know a cute little cord one see we're gonna get that going is what we're doing here and then we're gonna put a dab of glue up here like that and then we're going to place our circle that we made in the glue. And hold it there. And hopefully it doesn't squish into our fingers. But if it does, then, you know, we're all hardened by years of finger burns, right? 
Okay, and hold it for a minute. Yes, hot glue is obviously not Styrofoam's best friend, but technically I'd say it's the crafter's best friend because it melts the Styrofoam and then you get a better, you get a better, you know, what is it called? Bond. There you go, a better bond. You guys, I was a bad girl and I left my phone on one second. I should have put that on vibrate. How rude. So sorry, so sorry. Plus, that was my mom, so it's allowed. Because, you know, moms. And, you know, the whole giver of life thing. Sorry. <laughs> Anyways. She'd get kicked out of that. And then she'd go, oh my goodness, don't let me interrupt your stuff, Whitney. That's my mom voice. How many people do, like, a crazy, like, mom voice? And then when your mom hears it, they're like, I don't talk like that. I'm like, yes, mom, you do talk like There's no way I talk like that, Whitney. And then she'll say, Whitney Ann. Whitney Ann, I don't do that. My middle name is Ann, guys, if you didn't know. And uh, usually, uh, I usually only hear it when I'm in trouble from my mama. And my grandma and my auntie, when they were still with us. <laughs> Let me tell you, if I heard Whitney Ann, I did something wrong. <laughs> And let me tell you, I heard it a lot, because, I mean, shocker, you might not believe this, but I was kind of a smart mouth. <laughs> My grandma didn't use the word mouth, she used a different word. <laughs> but I was a smart, no matter what, I was smart, so that's, that's a good one. My grandma, My grandma always said I was so smart. That's, yeah, she, yeah, uh -huh, we'll go with that, we'll go with that. Yeah, she's smart, all right, mm-hmm. So all I did, guys, was, uh, did you see how I just started wrapping down the, the right from the top? I put a little bit of glue here, and then I just kept wrapping around. Now, I'm not of the have to glue every single round kind of person when you're wrapping things. You got enough uh, force here. You're holding things down. You can get things wrapped really good. Um, I'm going to unra unravel some more of this. Where I'm planning on putting these is not a high traffic area. They're going to be on display and then they're going to be packed away nicely, wrapped in some tissue paper. I don't expect any type of, I don't know, volcanic activity to come near them. But hey man, you never know. So if you feel like you need to put uh, six pounds of glue on it, then you go for it. You do whatever makes you happy, okay? Whatever helps you sleep, whatever floats your boat. We are all different. So you're just going to see me periodically put a little bit of glue here and there and then just keep wrapping and it's just that simple and I'm just holding it and closely taking it right up underneath the last row that was already on and you can see how quickly it's going. This is also going to go faster with this particular jute cord because of how thick it is. It has an uh, irregularity to it that I like. I like that in some places it's got a really big thickness and then on other spots it's kind of like not. See how right here I got a thickness but then up here it's a little bit thinner. So like literally right here this part got thicker. I love that. I love that about it. it makes me uppy. And then there's times I'll literally forget to glue the whole thing until it's like on the top or bottom. Also, climate might have something to do with it. You know, guys, I never, I never put that factor in. I live in the desert. I live in a very dry climate, um, and you know, obviously my summers are hot. But you know, right now it's not. It's actually beautiful outside. Um, although I'm getting jealous of everybody else's like rainy, snowy weather. And I know I'm told not to. You guys tell me every year, be, be thankful for your, for being where you're at. And I'm like, nah. There's like nothing green. Everything's brown and dirty and dusty and dirty and extra dirty and then more dusty. And did I mention how much dirt is in my window seals? Like you have to vacuum your window seals periodically because just dirt. What's in there? Oh, it's just dirt. Just it's not like it's sand. I mean, it's not like it would be nice if it was sand because that means I'm near water, not like beach sand, but. Vegas deserts are just dirt, guys. There's nothing pretty about it. It's just dirt. And bugs. And rocks. And more dirt. But anyways. <laughs> on a happier note, it's beautiful out right now. And my lemons on my lemon tree are uh, beckoning me to pull them. So tomorrow, tomorrow, well, as I'm recording this, 
Uh, hopefully I have this out before Thanksgiving, um, or maybe on Thanksgiving, but um, I have another Thanksgiving project, guys, and it's like a fall project, and I'm worried that it's too late. I may have screwed that one up, but it's going to be super cute. It's just, you know, if it's late, it's late. Don't watch it, I guess. I don't know, but I, I want to do it. I already kind of got it started, and I'm still going to have a video, but it's probably going to be late, unless I try to skip ahead and I put that one out before this one. I don't know. Life is chaotic, you know? It never has to be in order, does it? We don't ever have to do anything in order, do we? But my lemon tree is ready to be picked, so the hubs took the day off before Thanksgiving, and then he's got, obviously, out here in Las Vegas or in Nevada, we celebrate the day after Thanksgiving is called Family Day. Everybody knows it is Black Friday, but um, here in Nevada, it's called Family Day, and everybody has that off from work. Most businesses... Well, I mean, nowadays, businesses are open on Thanksgiving, so no one cares about eating with the family anymore. Can you tell I'm getting older? When I was younger, we used to sit with our families. I just had, like, a milestone birthday, guys, so everything's about how old I am now. Anyways, I think I changed subject, like, five times. My lemon tree will be picked tomorrow. <laughs> and, um... My husband is off. He took vacation, so he's going to have a good long weekend because we have the Friday after Thanksgiving off here in Nevada. So, um, I know it's not a federal holiday, but I think there's only one other state that does it. I'm not absolutely sure, but I was born and raised here in Las Vegas, guys. So, when I found out that that wasn't like a normal thing for everyone, it blew my mind. And I think I was like an adult when it, I think I was close to like, like 25. I'm like, what do you mean? And it's because you guys, I was in banking for 13 years. I did everything from teller work to vault work to customer service. I mean, I, I've done a lot in the banking world for many, many moons. Um, and I guess I worked for smaller banks or something. I don't know. I've always I worked for I've worked for some big name banks, ones that everybody knows. But I didn't figure this out until I worked for a smaller bank that was just in uh, here in Nevada and Arizona. And then we had to do stuff on Family Day because Arizona was open. And I was like, wait a minute, why is Arizona open? And they're like, well, you guys are the ones that get Family Day. I'm like, what are you talking about? And they're like, it's just an excuse for you guys to go shopping. I'm like, look, don't be jealous or bitter. And number two, for years, I just call it leftover day. That just means that's the second day everybody comes back over and we put every the same, all the same stuff back on the plate and put it in the microwave this time. That's what I've known it as. That's what I've always called it, is leftover day. That's how I've always done it. So I don't even know what all this Black Friday stuff is. When I was little, I don't, you know, I can't, it might just have been an age thing, but when I'm little, I really didn't even know what all that shopping stuff was. I don't think it mattered to me, which is probably why I didn't retain any of it. I don't know. We didn't go shopping like that when I was little. We did Christmas shopping, but not like... Also, mostly in my opinion, because my husband's been one of those people that goes out there after we're done eating and he camped out for a while to get some good deals. He's done it twice or something like that. I'm like, nope, I'm good. <laughs> I'll be here in my sweatpants, spreading to death on the sofa. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> I don't care about no tablet, TVs, I'm good. I always thought it was like an electronic thing. And since I am an 80s baby, electronics in the 80s weren't exactly what they are today, you know what I'm saying, guys? So, it is what it is. So all I did, guys, once I got to the bottom here, if you noticed, while I was, you know, jibber-jabbering, I was putting more glue on the bottom because we're getting closer to an edge, and I don't want it to fall off. So there's a couple pieces here that are still sticky. But they're not like burn your flesh off the bone sticky. They're just they're just slightly warm. A couple are like, you know, oh, I touched some hot food. Or like you put food in your mouth that's too hot, so you're like, because you don't take it out. But you know it's too hot, you should probably spit it out. But it's like, how many people are watching? Should I really do that? Not that that's ever happened to me. Just saying. <laughs> it's totally happened to me. Just proven to you guys I'm like super just regular human. I'm just a regular human. Why is that not sticking? Okay, so I got a big a big spot here, like that's one of the ones that's got a little lump in it. I'm gonna cut this at a diagonal and see if this works. Because if you cut them at a diagonal, 
sometimes you're able to just kind of kind of um, glue them with the green that you're already going in and then you can't tell let's just see what happens here I should get my I have these little silicone finger finger protector thingies um, that I got with this little guy and with my pink uh, silicone mat for my glue gun I should be using that but I didn't so we, you're pulling the blankies out. I got my little wiener dog over here, guys. I got one of them. Little Zoe is over here trying to make a little... Oh, she's just digging around with her little snoofer. Yeah. Okay. So my profile over here, I got a wiener dog digging around in her doggy bed. Making a bed. All right. So, okay. See, look. I stuck my hand in it. Owie. That one's still a little... That's a little... A little on the hot plate side. All right. That's it. So, minus the talking, how long that take, guys? That's not that long, is it? I still got a ton of this left over. That's so awesome. And also, look how crazy this looks. Now, some of these big nasty ones, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut off, you know. But you know, you can also take a lighter. I think I would go outside. Don't quote me and don't send me a bill. Or you know, if you burn your eyebrows off, I'm sorry. But you know, let's use a little bit of common sense, even though we all know common sense isn't common. Uh, you can probably burn this off with a lighter. Again, go outside if you want, if you don't like the little hairy stuff on it. But I'm specifically using it because I like the irregularities and I like the fuzzy weirdness of it. Plus, I mean, I didn't do that to this one. And look how cute it is. She's so cute. I love her. So, in any event, we got that one wrapped and done. Put it to the side. I'm going to wrap this one. This one takes a little bit longer because the, the yarn is a little bit more finicky. And delicate it's very delicate um, and again I told you guys this was the home this was lion brand homespun yarn but I didn't tell you if you wanted to know the color and all that good stuff in case you want to try to duplicate it now I've had this yarn for ages upon ages I would say more than a year um, I bought it all with just a bunch of funky stuff and it says it was three dollars and forty seven cents which leads me to believe that I got it at um, Joanne's. Could have. Don't know. But you can buy this online. You can buy this anywhere. Hobby Lobby sells Lion Brand and all that kind of stuff. Just find a yarn that looks funky. And I really like this. And again, I did not get it for this purpose. I got it for another purpose, which I can still use it. Um, but look at how perfect it turned out. And those burlapfabric.com roses. Oh my god. I love every second of it. So, Back to being distracted and not telling you originally what I was going to tell you. This is Lion Brand Homespun Made in USA of Imported Fibers. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, deco? I guess it's just deco. Like, usually you see a color on here, man. Um, if you're going to knit, you want to use needles 14S, or if you're going to crochet, you're going to use a, a hook size uh, 10S or a K. Uh, so I guess if that's important, uh, couldn't tell you. It's a five bulky weight, machine washable and dryable. Don't put these in the washing machine, please. But uh, yeah, here, I wrote the, the price I paid on it, $3.47. It just says deco. But here's your lot numbers and stuff. Color number 309, article number 790, and lot number 131564. So if you want to pause that, there you guys go. Um, I'm not sure why, I may, maybe deco is the color, who knows, it's just weird, right? Anyways, so with the yarn, because it's a little bit more delicate, I basically tied a knot here in the end. I got a little knot. That's a triple knot, actually, if you see how big that is. That's a triple knot because we need to do the same thing. I need to try to start. I'm going to pull this a little bit tighter. I'm going to cut the fuzzy end off with some old scissors that definitely need to be sharpened. Hold on one second. I believe my mom is texting again. And remember, giver of life.
Oh my god. <laughs> my mom's gonna have a beer, guys. I'm literally telling the YouTube nation, my mom's having a beer. My mama is 75. Yeah. <laughs> this is gonna be exciting. Anyways, so I'm gonna do the same thing here, guys. I'm gonna take the knot uh, as the jute, because the jute's thicker, so I tied like three little knots on themselves here. I'm gonna take this knot and I'm gonna start just twisting it on itself. In fact, hold on. Because I, I did burn myself before. Let's do like this and put our little finger protector on. Can I put two on? All right, let's try this with the finger All right, hold on, because I can't. <laughs> let's put them on when we're ready to put the glue on because I can't literally hold and twist it with that rubber thickness on my fingers. You gotta be able to feel it. I can't feel it. So, I'm just taking it and I'm twisting it in my hands. Now this is a little bit more delicate. I am gonna pull more and just kind of try to twist it around more. I can't really spin it that well. It's not very, again, it's finicky, but it's worth it in the end because of how pretty it looks. Okay, so, and then on this one, this second one, if you see here, I didn't put anything on the top of it, so I want the top to be pretty. This one, if you mess up that jute, which we did it on this one, but if you mess up the top of that jute, this one's covered with bows. And remember, even if you hadn't planned on covering with a bow and you've just completely, like, borked it <laughs> it's fine you can always cover it up with flowers and ribbons and glitter oh my you know what i'm saying you'll be good everything will be okay everything will be all right okay because isn't that mostly what crafting is is that it's an experiment of multiple uh happy accidents that just turn out and then you teach other people how to make the same happy accident or they see your happy accident and then they get inspired to make their own happy accidents with just a little bit of a twist of some other type of accident or mistake and it just looks good it's like what type of beautiful decor mistakes can i make today these are beautiful mistakes or experiments let's do that experiments experimentation gone wrong all right so i got my glue on here i'm gonna put my little circle down here and I'm gonna smoosh it so this time I don't feel it I mean I can see some of the glue came out on this side but it's not gonna touch my finger this side needs more glue I could tell already this one a little bit again more delicate and we're working with you know stuff that will be seen because I mean I want these to be as close to Big sister and little sister as they possibly can. Nice. All right, so just that one piece. There's a little bit over here. I can feel it's not hot no more. Oh, oh, excuse me. Zoe. Zoe, mommy's recording. No, don't care. Didn't think so. Zip it. Are you protect? You protect? Hmm? Yeah, okay. That was confirmation. All right, cool. Nope, not done. Sorry, guys. The kids, you guys know, being a parent here, it's hard work. You know. That's what I'm going with. This is also a little different because of the amount of um, yarn we're going to use. We're going to we're going to come back up on this. So I kind of pull this with a little bit more tautness. So it's taut, if that makes sense. And then I kind of go back up on it. But you can still hold it and then move it around and see as you're adding it that you're keeping it in, in line with the previous row. And again, it goes pretty quick. And this is something like if you're going to make a bunch of these, like, because these would make really good centerpieces for like a Christmas get together or like a church thing for um, sometimes they'll do the dinners um, for like the less fortunate or for homeless. These would be good centerpieces. I mean, I don't any any reason or any tablescape, uh, anything where you have like any guest books, stuff like that. Any kind of little display. 
um, it'd be cute to make these and, and donate them to the food banks. Um, a couple years ago, I donated a lot of my old um, swags and wreaths and things like that. My husband, I had him take them down to the food bank uh, for the church. And um, they were giving them to the people who were coming into the food bank that didn't have decorations. So they could actually have some stuff for Christmas. So that made me feel good. Because you guys, in all, in all honesty, making sales is not my thing. For some reason, I can make the most gorgeous stuff, but nobody buys it. So... Uh, yeah, I have links to Etsy, I think. I stopped, I might have stopped putting them in. My Etsy shop is still there, but it just doesn't do anything. The, the shipping is a nightmare for me. It's become like one of my foes. And every time I think about it, I get anxious, so I just don't do it. I make things that make me happy. I have fun doing this. I have fun talking with you guys. I love reading comments. I love interacting with you guys. I love the ideas you guys give me. So for now, YouTube is what it is. So making these and sometimes making some of my projects in abundance are pretty fun and then donating them um, that also can be part of the fun too sometimes uh, there's just people that have a lot of hand a lot of time on their hands sometimes uh, senior homes I know I don't know about hot glue but my grand let me tell you one thing my grandma was the one that I got all my my stuff from my grandma was the crafting queen in our house. She did everything. She taught me how to wrap presents. She taught me everything. How to make bows. How to make the most gorgeous Christmas trees. And then as she got older, it became, you know, the, the grandkids would put the lights on her tree for her. And let me tell you, my grandma started doing her tree, her Christmas tree, in October. Now, I used to put my... I, it's been a couple years... I uh, had a little hiccup these last two years, but I would put my tree up in sep into September for October, November because I would put up my tree and call it a harvest tree. So my Christmas tree was, in essence, just decorated for fall. That's really all it was. And I called it a harvest tree. Now, my grandma did not do none of that. She would actually put the tree up in October to start working on it to get the decorations made. She made each individual branch a different theme and my grandma had a really old artificial tree that like you just don't see anymore I think she got it at Montgomery Wards if anybody remembers Montgomery Wards we called it monkey wards in a good way guys I don't want to hear nothing about oh it's so fanciful. yeah I'm from the 80s okay <laughs> we called it monkey wards but there's also some other stuff too there's like when I was little there was a place called Farmore Farmore been out of business uh thrifties which thrifties it hasn't come back but there's this thrifties ice cream that i could talk if y'all want to talk about thrifties ice cream you let me know and i will put together a damn zoom call because i am telling you thrifties ice cream is earth cha <laughs> shattering it's life changing anybody especially if you're from california i had a, a a good really good friend i worked with she's from california she's from barstow and she remembers thrifty ice cream from thrifties the store was called thrifties and they had their own ice cream thing inside there. And you could go get a scoop of ice cream. And like I was explaining it to my husband. Because my husband's from all over. But mainly his childhood was like Texas. And then Louisiana. And then Boston. Or not Boston. Massachusetts. And then California. But he had never heard any of this stuff. Because he didn't move here to Vegas. And I, you know until he was a, toward the end of his teen years. So I'm trying to explain to him, I'm like, this is what it is, and it has its own special scoop, and this is what it was shaped like, and it had two holes in it, almost like a pig's now. And I literally got a piece of paper out, and I drew, very rudimentally, <laughs> a picture of this ice cream scoop. That This is how much of an impact this ice cream had on my life. Is that sad? I don't know. But I'm a kid. Kids, kids are allowed to like ice cream. I don't know about you, but I'm an adult, and I love that ice cream. Um... I saw the I saw, I saw it on a gas station window. They're like now serving Thrifties ice cream. I'm like Thrifties, the same logo, the same everything. You guys tell me in the comments if anybody knows what I'm talking about. All right, real quick because you know I'm talking and we're doing this. But if you see, I will follow my last row for a good amount of time, and then when I start to feel like you can see through too much, I just come back up and I wrap it a little bit more. And I'm adding more texture to it in some places. 
but it's still going in a circle form. So you can see almost there, kind of almost looks like little snow drifts. I don't know. I'm just grasping for stuff, but I, I, I like the way it looks and I'm loving how it's coming out. So like right here, I'm kind of like, okay, now I can see the green through it. So I'm just going to wrap my yarn around it there a few times. And then I'm going to go back to wrapping in, in line with my last row. And that's how we'll do that. So, back to ice cream. <laughs> uh, or what was I saying? What was another, what's another store? We were talking about stores that went out of business. Uh, service merchandise. Anybody know about service? Oh, because Montgomery Wards. My grandma got her Christmas tree. I want to guess. It could have been at Sears. Sears and Roebuck back in the day. But, yeah, it could have been Sears, honestly. But, the... We were a Monkey Wards family. Let me tell you, we went to Montgomery Wards a lot. Montgomery Wards. It was right next to the Weber Bread Store. So we go to the Weber Bread, Weber Bread Store and then hit hit up that. Uh, and that was just to get the discount bread and discount goodies. Because that bread store was cheap, cheaper than the grocery store. And it's funny, it's, isn't it weird how you remember certain things as a kid? I mean, the bread stores all closed. They don't have bread stores here no more. I remember going to the bread store a lot with my mom, even up into my teens. And I, I don't believe there's bread stores anymore. At least the ones that I went to with my grandma and my mom, they're all gone. They've turned into other businesses. Go get all kinds of good stuff at the bread store, other than bread. You know, they had always had like pastries and stuff too. But I'm guessing it was day old stuff. I mean, it didn't, it didn't taste stale. Sure, it wasn't hard or anything, but... Let's uh, turn this into a... Let's make some Christmas tree decorations and reminisce. I also want to hear about other stuff from other states. You know, every, this is, again, I only know Vegas because I was born and raised here. I only know, you know, this stuff that I know because I haven't. I also haven't traveled very much either, too. So, you know, I get I rely on the stories from you guys and my friends and people I've met that, you know, my friends in daily life that are from other areas and other places. But it's, it's always great to hear these things and to see that, you know, oh, they have the same thing where you're from, too. That's so cool. Or, you know, just different stories. I love hearing it. So I love it. I also love war stories, guys, like from the veterans. If you ever see veterans, you guys, thank them for their service. My mom and my dad was a was in the Army. My grandpa was, too. Um, my father-in-law is a retired Navy pilot um i get emotional when i talk about veterans so i try not to do it too much but they are the best people to talk to in lines oh my gosh the stories that me and my husband hear while we're waiting at the grocery store or waiting at the pharmacy or waiting anywhere you see it and it's usually it's, i love it because it's the ones that are usually wearing those uh the hats it's the only ones it's the the, the old the old guys that are wearing the hats they have the best jokes, too. Some of them are a little naughty. You know what I'm saying? I was like, hold up. I am a lady. <laughs> but they, they just got the best jokes, the best stories. My father-in-law's got the best stories, too. And I, let me tell you, I could hear the same story 1,600 times. Every time I hear it, it sounds different, and I love it. And my husband's like, you know that story. He told you that before. I was like, I know. I just want to hear it again. It's great. <laughs> Those stories, same thing. But I also like to hear stories just from people in general, from other places, other parts of the world, other parts of... Even just the U.S., since I haven't traveled so much, just to hear stuff from other places. It does not take much to entertain me. You guys probably could figure that out since everything... Oh, see that? Oh, that's what I get. So apparently it's touched some yarn, or your yarn has touched some very hot magma in a different part over here there we go and it came undone and decided to bite me right in the middle of my story jeez what was I talking about guys I think he's just talking about stories from other people anywho tell me all about everything I don't care if you guys want, send me messages on Instagram. If you don't want to share publicly, I'm fine with it. 
I can try to get to them. I do get a lot of messages on Instagram. Some of them are definitely, well, most of them are illegitimate from other weird spam or bot accounts that, you know, they're just scammer accounts. Uh, but a lot of you guys get through from there, too. Instagram's best place to message me. I don't think, I mean, there's also the community tab, but, I mean, as far as privately goes, if you want to share something private with me, you know, or send a message that way, that kind of thing. That would be the best way to do it, but I love stories. I love hearing about people's lives in other places, other states. I think that's just from my lack of experience in travel, but at the same time, I think it's just, I like people. And obviously, I don't know if you guys know this, but I kind of like to talk a little bit. I have embraced it. Uh, back when I first started YouTube, I used to let it get to me when people told me to talk too much, but I know all you guys out there, all my crafty thinkers, y'all are on top of some of those people. <laughs> let me tell you, some live streams I've had where you guys are like, then leave her alone. Just go. Like, That's right. Ugh. <laughs> all right. So I kind of went back and did some more little bit of, you know, fussy covering, you could say, here and there. So I'm just going to take this guy here, and I'm going to glue it in a spot, and I'm just going to hold it here for a second and wait for that to kind of dry a little bit. And then I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut right, right next to this piece of glue here, because that's basically going to hold it in. So if you see here, if you can kind of see right there. As a little dollop of glue, and that's really all you're gonna see. That is it. So once that's dry, which is definitely not yet, there we go. Just cut it off. And if you want to put more glue, or you want to secure it more, go go you know to your heart's content, desired whatever the ends insert saying here, whatever that's supposed to be, feel free, no harm, no foul, but that's what we're working with, those two girls are done, okay, so let me get some of this stuff cleared off, and I'm going to come right back, and we're going to get uh, the rest of these goodies done, but that's it, that's the main part of it, guys, we got the covering done, the twisting done, um, I got a lot of good jibber jabber out of my system, <sighs> but you always know, there's an endless supply of that, <laughs> all right, one second, guys, we'll be right back. Okay, so we are going to embellish our Christmas cones, our Christmas trees. Uh, we got just a few things for both of them, and then we're done, guys. Um, I want to do the burlap. I'm gonna do the burlap. I'm gonna do the jute one first, and then I'll do our pretty little creamy, snowy one second. Uh, so for the first one, I'll put this. The bur again, burlapfabric.com sent me these flowers uh, for me to use in my project today, and I absolutely love these. I had seen them previously on the website, but I never ordered them. I actually ordered some jute webbing and some burlap, but I didn't get any accessories. When they sent me these flowers, you guys, they're sewn together very well. They're put together exceedingly well. Like I, um, For this one, I actually cut one flower into two. I actually, because of, it, it was too big for the small one, but we're going to put these on this one, this size, because they're the perfect size for this larger Christmas tree. But this one, I actually had to cut this one apart, and I was able to make a second flower out of the base of it. So this right here is the original flower, and then I cut the bottom two layers off of it, and I made a second flower out of it. Because the, the fold lines were already there, the creases were already there. I just twisted it on itself and I made a second flower out of it. So you guys, even these pre-made flowers, you can still cut them apart and still use them and the extra mile and it, wor it worked for the project. I, I literally did not want to put a flower this big on such a small uh, cone or Christmas tree, but I wanted it to be there. So. Uh, got 12 of them. Again, I'll put the price down here because I have not looked it up while I'm recording. Uh, but they will be linked, a direct link to the actual website for these roses, these roses directly. I don't have an affiliate link with them. It's just a link for you guys to get to these things and order them from the company. I don't get anything from it, but uh, they did provide me with these. So this is an absolute awesome uh, privilege to have something so pretty. And it's the first time that's happened to me, so I'm extremely excited about it. So you guys go to that website, go get these flowers. They also come in different colors. So click that link 
and then go ahead and look for the other colors. But if you want them, I wanted this burlap color because I really, this, you know, French farmhouse country, you know, rustic stuff is so crazy and in, in, in popular and I'm loving every second of it. Um, these are good year round. Now I'm applying them in a Christmas theme at the moment, but you are going to see these and many, many more things. I'm actually also going to just use them in tiered trays because of how flat they are here. You can just set that on top of something or set it next to an LED candle. You don't really need to glue it into anything. You can just use it as is, as a decoration if you're like in a bind and you just need something to fill. Uh, you could put this in the bottom of a votive if you don't have a candle for it. Just put this in the bottom of the votive to fill the space for the time being. Or even some of those candle holders that have an empty space underneath it, put one of those flowers in there. I, I love the, the lace and burlap. I absolutely love it, love it so much. Uh, we're going to cut the bottoms after. Uh, this one we don't need anything for, but on this one here you'll see um, the ribbon goes underneath and we want to hide that. So let's get started on that guy first, and then I'll cut the bottoms with my little rotary cutter here that you guys, you guys are going to love it. Just going to love it. So first things first is let's take... Uh, let's take our ribbon, and now this one... I chose to do a pattern where I glued them to the top and I kind of just went down m more vertically than I was twisting. So I'm going to use the same size and the same ribbon here, which this is, uh, I just got this at Michael's last night when I went and got these cones. This is a uh, 3 8 inch wide by 3 yards. Now I used almost a full roll on this, this little guy here, except for this much. So I mean that's a decent amount, which I'm going to make one of the bows for the top of this one out of what's left. So. Um, all their ribbon right now at Michael's is 40% off, and that's not bad at all. Because again, this is Black Friday week, you know, and then, then you want to hear like the, uh, what is it, that's the stuff you hear from like, um, basketball games, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I mean, I'm nothing if not self-entertained. I know you guys haven't heard that before ever. Anyway, so... I'm going to show you in a second because I got it facing me. I'm just gluing the ribbon down because on this one I'm going to do a spiral. This is a larger one. I don't want to do that many pieces. This one I'm just going to do a spiral going all around the outside of it. So I, I am going to glue it down as I go. So you're going to see some of those lumps and textures in here. So that's really all I did was I put a little blob of glue there and I glued the ribbon on. Okay. So what we're going to do. And what I was doing with these cuts, I would cut them. And then once I got the, the length I needed, I cut like four or five more. Total, I have... One, two, three, four. I have five total on here, on the outside of this girl here. So for this one, we're just gonna do one continuous piece. So I kinda was gonna leave that flat like that. I'm gonna put this one on this finger. See how this works out. Get some of the glue boogies off my glue gun. And I'm gonna put kind of like a, as much as possible thin little line of glue on the back of the ribbon here and then I'm gonna hold it as tight as I can and try to get that flat and twist it and let it stick see how that kind of just sticks on there like that and then we're just gonna keep rolling we're gonna keep going with it until we get exactly what we're looking for now it's not going to be perfect. It's going to have some wrinkles and some lumps in it, and I'm 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 embracing that because I want the imperfections. I want it to look, you know, like a Christmas garland. And I kind of want just a different pattern on this larger tree than I used on the smaller tree. And quite honestly, guys, I'm like really just pushing my glue gun against the ribbon and barely putting like a smooth little line out. So there's not really a crazy amount of glue on here. So if you don't like what it looks like once you get everything twisted, literally just pull it back off. See, like already I'm going to kind of do like that. Come back up a little higher, I think. 
See, that's like that went like kind of crooked in my opinion. That's not really. There's not enough. I, I need more buffalo check. It's like I need more cowbell, guys. I I need more buffalo check. So let's pull this up a little. Now there's some glue on here. Like that's just how it's gonna lay. Let me see. I may have to do another one going the opposite way, see if I can do like a crisscross pattern because it's just getting too wrinkly, but at the same time, I wasn't having that problem at the top. But let's just see what happens. You know? Let's just see. I'm going to cut this off here. And we're going to glue it in down on this way. Just like that. Now that's not enough for me. Because this, this whole side back here is like naked. Look at that. There's like nothing back here. So let's just... We'll start another one. I'm just going to test out something, guys, just to see. Alright, so I'm just going to start this one on the next side. Not really the next side, I'm just going to start it towards the top. I'll show you in a second. Let me put this other glue on. And I'm just going to pop this. I'm just going to pop that on this side. Okay, so I'm just putting that there. So that's where we started the first one, and then we're starting this one right here on this side. This way. Hmm. It's not going to be even, guys, but I'm not going to pull the other one off. Yeah. Let's just see what we can do to make it work. Either it will look horrible or it'll look great. And on top of that, um, if you're one of those people that it needs to be neat and even, look away, because it's not going to be. And normally I'm one of those people. It's just probably me not taking into consideration the cone shape or some sort of math issue, because you know, they always say, you never use this when you leave high school. I'm going to blame it on some sort of math issue. We'll see how it goes. So I'm just going to keep twisting the ribbon around. And 
let's see, there's not much left on it right here. Let me just do this and then cut it off. More than likely, that's probably what happened with the small one. I just don't remember. And that's probably why I ended up choosing this design so that it was more even. But I don't want everything to match. I want it to be just a little different. Just a little different. So I'm just going to push that on that side there. And then now i got to decide what to do to finish off the rest of it. Because I have some uneven twirlies. These kind of pretty here, but then look, just still a big nicky spot right here. Big old nicky spot. And if I do like this, this is just going to get so crowded up here. It's going to look like buffalo check puke. Now granted, I don't really think there can be too much buffalo check, do you? Technically, yes, there could be. I mean, especially if it's not in a good pattern, it's kind of... Let's just see how this goes. So, Alright, I think I might got this, guys. I think it's just one of those things where I needed to plan ahead and I didn't. So I'm just going to glue this guy down on top of the previous one, or actually the very first one I did. So remember up here, if you're getting like a little bit of a glue mess or a goopy mess, don't worry about it because this is all going to be covered with a bow. This should come right into the emptier space that I wanted to cover. Yep, yep, it sure does. Okay, so let me cut this off right here. Like how I'm using the scissors that aren't for ribbon because they're so dull that they just kind of hack at it. <laughs> okay. It's almost going to be like a... A nice plethora at the top and then towards the bottom it's going to separate more. Okay, see that? So we're getting there, we're getting there. I think I'm just going to do one more to kind of empty out, even out this empty space here. 
And that will be spool number two. Good thing I bought three spools. Again, it's regularly $2.99, so I got it 40% off. I couldn't say no because I was like, the the the, the three eighths inch I have I didn't have, and I'm in love with her, so kind of didn't have a choice. things happening guys I'm not why does this keep happening to me I was like oh all this stuff all these videos I'm recording look at all these mistakes I could stop I'm gonna follow this one up all right so this one I'm gonna do from the bottom because I can't seem to get it to agree with me so I have found where I need it to start. I'm going to go up from there. It's going to cross over something at the top because the very first one I put on, I kind of, I did a really big, like weird space I shouldn't have, but it, it happened, so. And that's where it's crossing over, is right there. Mm -hmm. So here's where I'm going to have it meet the other side. And even then, guys, even the top of this is not looking bad. So we got a decent little kind of swirly thing going on there on our buffalo check. I'm happy with it. We're going to put ribbon on it. And we're gonna hide this little imperfection right here on the back. We're gonna put this, make this, we're gonna make this the front. Look how cute she is. See that? It almost looks like it's meant to do that. It is, right? It is? It's meant to do that. It is. Alright, so I'm gonna move on and we're going to. Let's see what's left here. I got these two guys. That's more than enough ribbon to make ribbon for the top. And then this guy here will go on. I'm going to use my rotary cutter now to cut the circles for the bottoms of these guys. Okay. So this little thing here is pretty awesome. It has a sharp piece on the bottom here, which has its own little cover on it. Okay. See that? Very sharp. Very, very threatening. Very sharp. Okay. So I'm putting that back on so I don't injure myself. And then it has a rotary cutting blade here, a circular blade. So you're going to pinch this and pull it up, and that exposes the blade for cutting. See that? And then I'm going to push it back down and see how it locks back in. There's open, and it closes so that the blade isn't going to cut anything while you're testing it. And then here is a little lever to move this piece in as far as in the inches. And there's measurements on this actual yellow piece here. There aren't numbers, but it's by inches. Uh, the top here says inches and the bottom says centimeters on this little black dial here. So you can turn that and loosen it and it moves it on your dial. And then also your little handle here that you use. This is what you hold that while um, you're twisting the item. You hold this piece. So you can actually twist this here and move that also so that you have a better hold in the middle, right? Okay, so again, not a measuring guru, guys, so bear with me. This is how I did the other one. I kind of put the blade around the edge of where I needed it to go. And then I looked for the, as much of the middle as I could. And then I twisted that tight, like that. 
So if you're holding this here, I got this thing in the middle. Just twisting to see. Yep, that's about as good as it's gonna be. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed. <laughs> so, I'm gonna place this guy here. See how close I am to the edge here and how close I am to this edge here. Just trying to get all the bang for my buck. So now I'm gonna pull this up so that my blade's exposed, okay? And I'm gonna push, push down. I'm not gonna push down really hard because this is a super sharp blade. But I'm gonna hold this piece here and then this is how we're gonna move this piece here. So you hold down with this hand and you move this piece here and that's what's cutting your felt. Just like that. And then that's where I, oh, there's a sticker back here. That's where I let up a little bit. And then look at that pretty little circle. Let's see, did I get it right? Did I get it right? It's a little bit too small in my opinion, but it covers everything we don't want it to see, right? So we'll glue that one down because, you know, that's it. But this I'm gonna move just a little bit out. I'm gonna, un I'm gonna loosen it a little bit. I'm going to move it a tiny bit out to make it bigger. Tighten it back up and let's do this one here and see. And I forget, I forgot the sticker on the back of the felt. That's how easy it is to use it, and you get such a pretty clean circle. Look and look at that one. That one's perfect. That one covers everything on the bottom of that. Look at that. That's perfect. So I just made it a tiny bit bigger. And on this one, I don't think it's that big of a. It's not very detrimental. It's still covering everything we want it to cover. Let me see if it's uh, if I can switch the two. If this is just too. Yeah, that's, that's too small for that. I'm going to prefer to cover this one with it. So that's it for the thing. I'm going to make sure I um, cover that. Where's my little... I push the blade cover down, and then I'm putting the little spiky cover back on it, and then that's your tool. Again, it's called a circle rotary cutter, and I love it. And I will be using it for some felt flowers. That's the reason why I bought it. You just have to cut a bunch of these circles, and then you fold it in half, fold it in half again, and then glue them on so you make lots of pretty little felt flowers. So that will be a project probably closer to well, maybe Valentine's Day, maybe spring, maybe Mother's Day. But this is going to come in handy for many, many, many more things. But it's also it just makes it so much prettier and nicer, in my opinion. I can't cut a circle that good. So, not necessary, not a, a, a detriment, you know, absolutely must have step, but makes things look way nicer, in my opinion. Puts a good finishing touch to it. So, and just put glue on there and glue it down. And there you go. You have a good little spot on it. Also, there is a, the option of. Um, you could put these on like candlesticks. Remember, I have 36 of those candlesticks from uh, Dollar Tree. You could put it on that. I wouldn't put it on a clear one. I would paint it first. Um, you could put it on a wood candlestick. You could put these on a tin can. I thought about getting tin cans out and gluing them to the top of a tin can and just like wrap, wrapping the jute around it, putting another flower on it, something like that. But for these, I just want these to be on their own display for the moment. And then, of course, you guys just saw my last video was that stacked book stand. Yeah, these, these are gonna definitely go on that stacked book stand. A couple of them are at least. Check that out. Look how cute it is. Okay, so that was done. Now I waited because obviously I wanted the felt to cover up the pieces of ribbon that we were gluing to the bottom of that. So that's why I waited on that. So now we can complete our pretty girl here with just a couple bows. So what I did for this one was I didn't do your normal bow that you would think of as a bow. So let's just see here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a loop 
and then I keep this extra piece separate because that's going to be our tails. All right, and we need a small zip tie. So I'm just making a loop and then I'm going to cinch it in the middle. All right, and that's going to be the bow we're going to make uh, for the top of this. This isn't the kind of bow that you would make something like you would for a wreath where we're going to take it and twist it in our hands and all that. I want the stem or want the the tails to be underneath. And I need the um, the bow to be on top. So I literally took a piece of ribbon and we're folding them together here to create a rectangle and then we're going to pinch it in the middle. And you see how the bow is created by pinching it in the middle? Let's dovetail our ends. Now normally I like them to be like off center, but it's not it's not important on this one. I, I like them to be off center when we're working with like reeds and floral arrangements and stuff. This cute little knickknack thing is not going to be you know, ruined if it's not an offset. It's just, a, it's so sometimes that's just my personal preference. Sometimes I get my stuff in. So I'm putting this in the middle of here and I'm cinching it together just like that. All right, we're done with that. So I'm put that off to the side. Then I'm taking one of these little four inch zip ties. They're very small little zip ties and I'm just wrapping it around the middle. Connect it. Oops, sorry guys. So many times before I didn't have it on vibrate. I didn't have it on silent. Then I took it on vibrate. Now it's at cheese with me. I'm so sorry. So now I'm cinching this in the middle. I can see my loops aren't exactly even, but again, we're gonna go for quirky. So I cinch that in the middle as much as I can. That's what we got. You're going to pick a direction and just pull your tails down in that direction. Okay. And then also what I did on this one is we put a couple bows on every side, but then the center of it needed to be covered because otherwise you're looking at a zip tie. Okay. So cut the majority of the zip tie off here but I did use an awl to poke a hole through the middle here because I wanted this sunken in so I can glue that in it has more of a catch-all for it so I'm going to cut most of that piece off there and then make sure I didn't cut too much off you don't know, cut too much off the zip tie it just pops back open trust me I know okay that's good so if you have a sharp stick, some sort of part poking tool, I have this. This is an awl. You can get this also. This one isn't available anymore, but the one they replaced it with is actually really cool looking. Um, this is also linked in my Amazon shop under tools if you need an awl and you don't have an awl. So I'm going to take the real sharp guy here and I'm just going to poke it right down in the center. I can hear all the crackling in there. Just making a hole bigger for me to put that piece of the zip tie in there as I knock it over. All right, so now I need to take a small little piece of this, this ribbon here, and then I'm gonna use it, and I'm gonna cover it once I glue it to the top here. So I'm gonna get that glued in on top here, and then I'm gonna use this piece to cover it. So I put the, I made the hole bigger down there, I'm gonna put a dab of glue right on top there, and then I'm gonna take this piece right here of my back of my bow and my zip tie and I'm just going to nestle that in that little hole it's sort of shallow and that little pool of glue and I got to twist this in a way where I want it facing to the front I think we wanted it like that pull my tails forward as much as possible just holding that down there like that okay now I'm gonna glue this guy on 
to the middle piece there and that's strictly just to hide the zip tie. That's all I did was to hide the zip tie. So put a little dab of glue in the front, push that in there like that. Get that secured down there in the front. Okay, and then I'm gonna pull glue right over here in the middle, all the way down to the back, just a tiny little bit, not like a whole big squeeze of that trigger, just just lightly put a little bead in there and then push that back over. So you could stop there if you wanted, but you know I'm not going to because I want them to match. So I'm going to make two um, just like little shoelace bows. That's all it, what I really did was cut, was uh, tie them like a little shoelace. And then pull them down, make them smaller, adjust them here and there. Make them, you know, appropriately sized. And then you can take them and always just compare them to what you have there. One for the front, one for the back. And then make sure you guys have your ends. On these, this little of ribbon I cut at diagonal. I don't do any of that dovetail stuff on the little tiny ribbons. I think it's just a little too much. Strictly my opinion. And then I'm going to take this little shoelace bow we just made. And we're just going to glue it right to the back here. So cute. So cute. Here, I'll show you in one second. Let me get a little bit of bead of glue. And then push that knot right there in the back of that glue. Where's my little guy here? Push that in a little bit more. And then just let it lie the way it does. Just let it do its thing. See that little back there? It's just like a little, it's a beautiful little buffalo check mess. I love every second of it. All right, one more, one more bow for this side. shorter. You got a little bit left over there. So two spools of that is what I went through to make these two guys, these two girls. Oh, I say big sis and little sis. I like this bow at the front here pops a little bit more so we're gonna we're going to need to hold it in there just a little bit longer while that glue, the hot glue cures a little bit. Just a little bit.
Look how cute she is. And there's her little sissy. Look how cute those two are. So cute, guys. So cute. So those two are done. Put those off to the side here. I can totally do that when I'm not recording. I don't know why I'm sitting here trying to fix all of it. So, now, <clears throat> this girl here should go even faster because we don't have any ribbon. We're going to use a couple of these gorgeous burlap roses from burlapfabric.com. Again, you get a 12-pack. And the link to these directly will be in the description below. Takes you right to their website, right to this page where you would would uh, see this item. <clears throat> so like this one, I kind of stuck it like I stuck them in the middle, <clears throat> but kind of off center from each other, at a diagonal, a diagonal. And um, <clears throat> now these I leave whole. This is one flower that I cut into two because I needed it to be different. Now this one I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to leave these whole. Because this tree has the size and can handle the um, the basic the size and the, the uh, what does it say the girth <laughs> just the girthy girl <laughs> that's what I call the wiener dog so I'm biting the bullet and I'm gonna glue this first one down right here just put a bunch of glue right here in the middle of it and plop it right there onto the tree and I'm gonna hold it down just like so let it cure a little bit and we're going to put the other one I'm wondering if I should just if I should do the opposite and put this one on this side so that when they're standing together I'm going to do that so when they're together this one goes this way and this one will go this way okay I'm going to put this one up here like this So I'm going at a, in a rectangle from one side to the other, and then that's how I'm going to hold them down. On the tree itself. So once I get a good curve on those, the bottom circle of that petal, we'll be able to put our leaves and our little berries in and we're done. But just hold this and, and let it have its time for, you know, curing so that the, you know, the hot glue can, can cool off just a little bit. Otherwise, it'll, it might, it'll come back up. Oh, stuck my finger right in the side of it. See that? So guys, how's your day? How's your day going, right, y'all? Mm -hmm. I don't know if you could hear it, but like a couple seconds ago, Zoe was over here sniffing stuff. This little wiener dog has one of the strongest noses. Her little, I call it her snoofer. She snoofs it with her little long snoofer. It's so powerful. She can smell all the way across the house. She knows when you got anything that's not doggy food. She's so sweet, isn't my baby? Uh, Tootsie, her sister, is in with her daddy because Tootsie is bad like a baby, and if it's on the floor, it's in her mouth. So there are a lot of times that Tootsie is not allowed in Mommy's craft room. For good measure, because like I said, she's bad, and stuff goes in her mouth, and she's bad, and she tries to eat it. And she used to eat rocks when she was a puppy, and that was like, if you can't get her to stop doing that, we may have to have surgery. Like, do what? No. <laughs> so, I uh, quite honestly have not vacuumed my floor in here for some time, so I am not about to let her in here so that she can eat something. So, we got our roses glued on, and look how gorgeous that is. It's so gorgeous. So, on this one, I had to use the topper. The topper. Uh, one of the end pieces of this old uh, bundle of lamb's ear, because these were smaller roses, a smaller size and to scale for this this Christmas tree cone, I used the lamb's ear that was the smaller leaves. This one we're going to have a lot more leeway to play with 
So I'm going to use some of the larger leaves I have. And I'm going to just clip the leaves off right at the base. And actually that one just popped off on its own. And I might use four on this one. Let's see how that goes. And then on this one I definitely want to use the berries and I want to use... Okay, I didn't use any of these leaves on that one. I just used the berries and like these little plasticky things here because they're they're basically the perfect color of the of the lamb's ear. So let's see what happens. I've got some extra pieces here. So all I have left of that stem, uh, that little bush, is like these little eucalyptus looking ones. And you guys know I can find something to use that for. <laughs> that would not be a problem, trust me. So let me, I got a little bit of glue runoff on this side. I'm just going to clip it off. There's a little star foam ball that's going to possibly be glued somewhere. We'll see. So I've got two bundles there. I got four leaves. I think I might use five leaves just to make it an odd number. And I do have an extra one right there on that same stem. So here's where your creativity kind of might try to uh, pop in. To say hello to you a little fun. Anyways, ignore me. Uh, I, I just cut a smaller leaf because I kind of want to put this one like right here on top of that one. Or do I want it coming off of this one here? Yeah, I kind of want. I want. Yeah, I'll do like that and have it coming. I am going to stick it in between the two. Uh, la layers of the actual flower here. So the flowers actually are going to work to our advantage that they're it's a layered construction the way it's twisted together in there and so that leaf goes right in there like that and then I'm sticking this one in that blob of glue that's already down in there and see look at that alone look how pretty oh I can't get over how pretty this stuff is it's just so soft and and delicate and very just a different type of Christmas, you know. She's so pretty. Now I glued this down really good. Yeah, there we go. Alright, so I'm gonna put this one here underneath our flower on the bottom, kinda at a diagonal. Just make sure you're not putting things under to the point that when they're sitting down that that leaf like hits the table or something because then you're not going to be able to it won't it won't stand correctly unless you're going to put like a pedestal or something underneath it and there's nothing wrong with that like I have these wooden candlesticks here these are perfect for also for the display to just kind of stick them on top of that there's that doesn't that look cute look how cute that is that would be another way to, to display it or on top of the book stand but you have to make sure that you know your leaves aren't in the way when you're setting it down that it doesn't hit the table you know so that was one thing I had to really make sure of if I'm laying it flat to work on it am I going to mess it up possibly yes let's use a bigger leaf up top here on this side and put this small guy right down here. Now see that would cover that. So I need it more this way, but that's not gonna work. Alright, so that's kind of like a double double layered leaf effectish sort of kind of is fish ish ish. Like that in some stuff. side all 
right, so I'm going to tuck that one up top, right behind this leaf here. I'm just going to tuck that whole little bundle, this whole little bundle. It fits perfect in just right there, and it looks great too. So um, if you can see here, there's like a little perfect opportunity. We're going to squirt some glue in that. Take our little bundle, pop it right behind there, just like that. You see how cute that's turning out? So again, hold down your roses, make sure your glue is, is set and cured, and then from there, you can treat this like a bow. You can treat this like when we uh, play around and add the extra little elements to bows, or like a flower, like you're making a floral arrangement, essentially. You're just finding ways to connect things around something in a pretty way. We're finding a way to attach all this gorgeousness in a pretty way. I'm going to have this one kind of come at an angle this way. So we kind of have a diagonal piece like, like if it follows a line like this. That's at least how I'm thinking it would work out. Let's see if we can get that to actually come to fruition. And I put glue this whole length of this leaf, by the way. On this particular one, I don't want the leaf coming up. So I'm gluing this whole puppy down. So she's not going nowhere. We'll see where we're going to put that extra one. I might put that up top. Like this one. I'm going to have to cut some more of the stem off because it's just not deep enough. But I don't want to cut all of it off because it's literally holding this little bundle together. You see that there? I've cut it super short, but I'm going to glue that whole thing in. I just need it to be hidden under the flower. I don't want it to be showing. Yes, so pretty. So, get a little squirt of glue. Tuck her in there. Perfect. Guys, this turned out so pretty. I just, you know, some, I can do some classic stuff, guys. It just seems like this year the most popular stuff has been these natural colors. The lamb's ear is a very classic Christmas look. You can't, you can't ever really go wrong with lamb's ear at Christmas time. Um, and then also lately uh, eucalyptus and these other like little succulent type looking things. I don't know what they're called. Um, these types of little plasticky things and lots of greens and sage greens and fern greens. And I love green, you guys. You already know I have a obsession with green because there's a lack of it where I live. <laughs> brown, more brown and dirt and more dirt. But um, these this year, these colors are just, they just talk to me. They talk to me and they tell me that they're beautiful and that uh, everything is going to be all right. And I believe them. I'm just playing around here and putting putting some of the leaves in different spots to see if I'm digging where I like, you know, if I like where, where they're going. Now this one I'm going to trim down because it's missing the fuzzy here. So I'm going to cut the leaf as though I can get it, you know, I basically reshaped it if you see that. So I had to cut off that piece that was missing the fuzzy so now I've reshaped the leaf and the leaf is actually a smaller size and it actually looks a lot better. It works more in the space that I plan to put it in. Because I'm going to tuck it in the 
flower right there. I basically had a piece that I had already cut out and I wasn't going to cut more and I wanted it where I wanted it. And I won. <laughs> but this is not a competition. Please do not try to think that everything has to be a competition. Because it doesn't. It really does. I got one more lamb's ear, but do I want to put it down here somewhere? I could do the same thing because these ends here are a little. They're a little thick, so I'm kind of just curving it and cutting with a curve. Now that's definitely not even by any means, but we're going to be hiding most of it, or some of it. Actually, that's the end of the showing. It's not even at all. Let's curve it more inward. Make it a little bit neater. Yeah, there we go. Beautiful. This is gorgeous. Sorry guys, it's not facing you. I think I'm gonna stick. Yeah, I just needed to see where I was putting it so I could put the glue in the right spot. And then push that right under into its new home. And then put glue on this here. And push her right there too. So I got all those little extra pieces I pulled off. That turned out beautiful, in my opinion. Um, yeah, for my taste, I'm loving this. It'd be cute if I could put that little star foam, one a star, piece of star foam in each center. Or if I had pearls. You guys, I don't have pearls, but if I had pearls, I'd use the pearls in the middle. Damn it. Do I have, I have beads. No, I don't. I got buttons. Would buttons be cute? No, I'm just leaving it the way it is, but look. That little star foam piece that popped off one of these others would look great in the middle of that rose, wouldn't it? <coughs> Excuse me. Excuse me, guys. I'm inhaling some of the <coughs> burlap fuzzies in the air. Alright, that's it. I love this. Tell me what you guys think. So, push this out of the way. Let's get all of our non-essential stuff out of your view. Let's see what we've got. Here is Big Sis and Little Sis. Look how cute they are. Oh, I'm loving every second of that. I'm loving every second of that. Absolutely. Okay. And then here's our little jute and buffalo check. Little Sis and Jute and Buffalo Check Big Sis. Two different patterns here, but I like that. I like the way it looks. These are these are going in my front my front entryway. These little Jute and Buffalo Check girls right here are definitely going in my front entryway. And I might put these somewhere in the kitchen, or sorry, in the living room since I got a lot of that uh, Buffalo Check and then these natural greens out there. So cute. What do you guys think? Did I tighten my... Jeez, I bet you, I bet you I sure did. What you think, guys? Aren't they cute? I love them. Alright, so there's an idea or two with these. Put one here and one here. What do you think about these girls? Aren't they gorgeous? I can't help it. I love, I really do. I think my favorite, even though I'm a buffalo check freak, I, I love these. These turned out way better than I thought they were. Again, these roses are available at burlapfabric.com. In the description below, you will have a link directly to their website, to directly to those roses on their website. So should you choose to get them, you will also enjoy every second of it like I did. And thanks to Burlap Fabric, again, for graciously sending me these guys, because I have... Uh, six more that I'm in love with and you guys will probably see those in a couple other projects I uh, definitely will see it in one more project I know for sure I have planned so that's how that's going there so that's it for today guys I think our 
Christmas trees turned out really great. Um, again, you ever just make stuff and then kind of look at it and you're like, I made that. <laughs> this is like something that you end up being just so happy about that you're like, yeah, it's pretty. It's weird, but it's pretty. I tend to make weird stuff, guys. I don't know. Um, the yarn worked out really well. It looks very almost snow-like, snow drifts on there. And then, of course, the jute cord goes really fast. It'd probably go faster for you than it would me because I talk a lot. Now, again, if I wasn't here talking to you guys, I could get it done quicker. But the fun part is experimenting with where you're putting the things and moving your flowers around, moving your ideas around, changing your format, changing your plans, whatever comes up. Uh, going and digging through a closet or a stash or a pile of ribbon or something to find something different because it's, it's just not feeling right or it's just not laying right and you, you want to change something doesn't feel right. Do that. Tell me what you think, guys. I love how they turned out. Uh, so we got these little Christmas tree cones. These are great for pretty much anywhere. Front door, uh, entryway, candle holders, you name it. Again, don't burn a candle near these, obviously, because everything on here will catch fire, but um, these are really good space fillers for decor. And they also make really good gifts. I mean, I don't know about you, but I don't mind getting decorations the day of a holiday because it makes me look forward to the next year when I get to put it out. Also, pumpkins for me are year-round, so. <laughs> I know it's not pumpkin, but I'm just saying, never hesitate to send Whitney a pumpkin. She loves them. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Um, tell me what you guys think in the comments below. And, of course, any other questions I asked during this nice little, you know, crafty chat we had. Um, just tell me your stories. Give me your ideas, tips, tricks, you name it. I love hearing the things you guys share with each other and share with me. And, again, thank you guys for everything you do. You help me more than you possibly could know. The same way that you guys send me messages and tell me I help you. So... We're going to keep it going. It's a good thing. So thanks again. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Happy crafting. And until next time, guys, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.